very much for having me on board and, and for the for the people at uh, my summits and health and the virtual health program. It's a, nice to be here. It's a Go great ahead. pleasure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, John, I'd just like to start off with the first question. Uh, how would you describe your work with digital health information? Well, that's a fairly long story because um, I'm the generation that brought in or my generation brought in or we were brought into uh, the digital world. Um, so I started with papers and, and, and films and so on. And in that world, I was able to do my own thing. I was able to mark things. I was able to uh, underline things. I was able to use uh, paper in, in, in many ways. And on the uh, radiological films, I was able to put uh, little circles and arrows with a, with a, with a marked tip pen, uh, wax tip pen. Uh, and all of a sudden that was taken away from us. And all we were given was a sheet of paper on a, on a screen and, and, and images on the screen. Uh, that's how it started. And we little by little, we started to improvise. And because of the track record that you uh, alluded to, I was ready to do something about it. And um, this led then to um, systematically work with what the hospital has. That's the beginning of everything. You, you, you know, it's very difficult to replace an EMR or EHR. So um, we developed uh, the first uh, EHR uh, dashboard that was vendor neutral, so we could, you know, use it with any uh, EHR. And uh, I think that's one of the things I'm going to talk about how we did that. Um, now, in in doing that, and Kathy went into uh, she very beautifully talked about the problem of the clinician versus the rest of the world. I think in a very constructive way. Uh, it's I mean, if the clinician doesn't come up with solutions, uh, or let's say first of all needs, and then push for solutions. I mean, who who will? Uh, and then the second part, which is a, a problematic in many Scandinavian countries, or has been, is that we read we need industry, even clinicians with ideas need industry to bring these, uh, you know, as products. So um, I'm going to talk about two things with respect to COVID, because that's sort of the catalyst for all of this. Um, integration, and um, and and uh, what also Kathy mentioned, uh, collaboration between the different parties. So, okay. <laughs> so John, what are the, the challenges in the integration of information, if I may ask, in regards to that? Okay, um, with respect to the uh, integration issue, um, as a practice in position, um, I would want uh, easy access to pertinent data because I have the access to the whole database. I, ha I can look at all the images I want on PACS. I can look at all the pages of EMR. And even in the national repositories, I can get you know hundreds of pages of, of text. But when I'm working as a clinician in, in the patient ward, uh, I would want the pertinent data present in such a way and in a standard, standardized way so AI can work on it. I'd like to um, have that you know, uh, present, uh, I'd like to, to, to access it at any time. Um, and I think in the, in the COVID um, time, uh, we're looking at things like um, a dashboard, if you will, or something, I'll get to that later, where we would have uh, clinical notes, and then we would have access to a certain uh, images, and, and just certain images, not all the images, uh, certain selected images, and then to uh, a lab, um, and, and the lab presented as graphs, like graphs of, of, of fever, um, uh, graphs of um, hemoglobin, muscle aches, um, liver enzymes, T lymphocytes, and certain uh, cytosine, cyto, cytokines. And these are things that have been brought up by clinicians and AI people um, so far, and there's many others, uh, as being important. And why are they important? They're important because uh, the clinician is very interested in the prognosis, uh, I mean, as is the patient. Um, in other words, is this patient probably going to need the ICU unit, or is he or she, um, you know, coming along rather nicely? Um, and I'd like to see that, you know, in a glance and not having to rummage through database after database, some of them, by the way, with their own logins and so on. Uh, I'd like to just log into my system, log into, uh, let's say, log into my computer, log into the system, and then um, for each patient have 
um, uh, have a, a workspace or, or dashboard, if you will, uh, that I can then uh, add to and follow as a patient um, uh, continues onward. Um, another issue that just as, as a, you know, we're talking about AI today, um, we measured tumor volume uh, using an ellipsoid formula, which gave us kind of a rough idea. Um, you know, why can't we develop um, uh, a method using AI that would give us the actual tumor volumes and have those tumor volumes um, uh, graphed over, you know, the period of days and weeks and even years. And then we could see what the effects of surgery, what the effects of chemotherapy, what the effects of radiotherapy really are. And especially in the, in the time of personalized medicine and genomics and so on, we've got a lot of things we need to track. And uh, this has a bearing on COVID-19 also because in this particular, uh, and I'll show a, a picture of that later, in this particular situation, we have um, a, a problem of, of non-integration. We, we have information all over the place. Um, and um, okay, then what about when a patient leaves the hospital, uh, goes somewhere else, goes to from Finland to Sweden or to Italy? Um, you know, how do you? We're not talking only about interoperability. We're talking about transfer of information. Even, I mean, do we fax each other like we've been doing for you know a few decades, or or how do we do this? Um, and then the national uh, medical care repositories where we have, you know, um, the EMRs of all the different um, hospitals in the country. Um, well, you know, that's what it is. It's just a huge amount of information that somehow needs to be assembled in a way that it's there. We need all that information. That's not the question. We need all the images, by the way. That's not the issue either. It's just that we need to have access to pertinent information and pertinent images and pertinent labs and so on in a way that is, uh, you know, look at it as in, in a glance, we get uh, uh, a picture of what's going on. And so that, that's pretty much what uh, integration, as far as I'm concerned, is. is is all about. Would you so, please elaborate more on the collaboration side of, of the idea? Um, yeah, um, I even had a, had a couple of slides here on that. I think I'll show um, show one of them here. Um, um, just a minute. That's not a problem. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it's, uh, I have it here, the collaboration. Um, well, first of all, before that, I'll go back to one of my slides and um, I'm struggling to, to find where it is. Oh, there it is. And Okay, I think you see something now. Uh, this is what I mean by a dashboard. Um, and this is made for COVID-19. And of course, the, the things that I took here are from the internet. But uh, this is just to make the point that I'm trying to make that we had and have for uh, other kinds of patients. Um, uh, on the left, you would have clinical notes. And these are just decisions that are made, not the whole EMR. You have the whole EMR already. Why, why re replicate it? Um, on the right, there's a, there's a space that can be um, filled in with um, chest X-rays and, and CT images, and uh, you see the X's on the red line. Those are the time uh, times of those um, uh, particular studies, and then on the bottom, you can see, you can see, for example, uh, a fever curve. Now, I, I alluded to the other things that could also be put on the curve, um, and so this is a, a you know it's a one glance thing i mean if you're if you have one or two patients with covid in your unit you're okay with things as they are but um i found that if you, you know if you, well, let's talk to our colleagues in italy and new york i mean if you're if your unit is overflowing uh you've got a lot of problems but i mean one of the big problems is how to uh present and how to access the pertinent data on this patient that i'm seeing at the moment um, you know, in a, in a, in a way that uh, serves the cause, so to speak. Um, and so 
Okay, and then we're doing scientific studies, and the problem with scientific studies is we have to uh, to to gather the information. Well, many people use separate databases, and ethics committees don't like that, um, and and so on. Well, this is a part of the EMR or, or the EHR, however you want, and uh, you can standardize it with fire in such a way that that it, uh, it's conducive to to AI and to machine learning and so on. But um, okay, you you asked about sorry about that. You asked about the collaboration, and I think this is the most important slide here because um, Kathy, for example, alluded to this, and the young lady just spoke before me. Especially, um, she's talking about uh, uh, the the role of startups. Um, this has been my own way of doing it, and I learned this from the from the American Moon program um, in the 1960s. Uh, and and uh, if you look at the Mars program at the moment, it's following the same kind of idea. So the people that are involved with the project or the or the uh, the patient in this case, um, if you're in an innovative clinic, um, you 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 learn to to identify clinical needs. Uh, there's something that needs to be done, something that needs to be. And okay, you can go to the IC department of the hospital, but often if you're talking about real inventions, which is what I want to talk, I want to talk about inventions, not just um, uh, things that are improved a bit. Uh, you, you go to the academic world and you find the, you know, the, the, the right uh, scientists and engineers and even economists. Um, and then you work on this program or this project, um, the, the clinician, the role of the clinician is important because he or she has the ultimate um, judge of what we're doing. Because if that, if the solution that we're working on works, the patient will tell you. If it does not work, uh, the patient will tell you. I mean, the, that uh, the, the person is totally unbiased. I mean, we can love our ideas, we can love our products. But, uh, you know, that's where we get, and that's why the role of the clinician is important because, well, he or she is the one who gets that feedback. Okay, then we have the idea with the, with the, with the science people, we bring that to industry. We might have a prototype uh, of a software program or a hardware uh, device, and we work with industry for a while and, and get that done. Now, whether that's a startup or a large corporation, it's the same thing in this, in this way. And then the idea, of course, is that you finally get a product back into your clinic. And in my own clinic, uh, when we were working on neural navigation as one of the uh, few groups uh, in the 1990s, very small groups throughout the world, as a matter of fact, um, we had five neural navigators in our, in our little department um, uh, just because we were working with industry. So we had, we had the, the top of the line uh, devices to 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 use, and so our job then, uh, at this point as clinicians, uh, earlier we we were defining the needs. Uh, at this point, uh, we are implementing and we are assessing. And if you look at this triangle here, you can see that everyone benefits. The university gets the the, the doctoral theses and the publications. Um, industry gets products that can be exported. Um, and then, of course, the clinician gets something that he or she can use uh, with the patients. And so if we bring this idea back to COVID and especially the, um, the, 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 the bio world, you know, we have um, over 100 vaccines in the making. And um, we hope some of them will work. We don't know that yet. We assume they will. Um, we're looking at perhaps a second wave in different countries. Uh, perhaps it will come, perhaps not. But I mean, we need to be prepared and we need to integrate um, or find tools to integrate. And we, I just showed you one of them. Uh, tools to integrate um, the, the information that we have. And then we need collaboration among the different parties as this last slide is showing. And so um, I'm sort of excited about this. And um, we just heard about the startups and uh, I'll just say uh, a couple words about that because uh, the startup is the one that has the idea and it has the, it's focused. It can do things that perhaps uh, the big, or, you know, the big corporations, uh, you know, they have their own projects and they're all competing for attention. 
But if a big corporation hears about something fundamental and, and game changing, uh, they will certainly, you know, become interested. And of course, the big corporations uh, have the market. Uh, so, of course, uh, big corporations, all of them started small. And so maybe the small company, the startup will one day be huge. But there is another avenue uh, that I've used a lot, and that is to talk with the major corporations and, and get something together. Um, it requires time. Sometimes it, it can take up to once it took me five years to present an idea and then, you know, have something come to fruition. Uh, a lot of small companies don't have that luxury uh, uh, of patience, but uh, in the long run, it it it, it helps because um, you can also you, you you can do you can generate money in many ways for the small companies. So these are sort of the the takes that I have on 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 with respect, especially to COVID, because I see it as the speakers before me, all of them. Uh, we see this as, regardless of our background, we see this as a catalyst. Uh, for what we're doing. I mean, COVID is a catalyst for this program that you're running. Um, it would not be the way it is without COVID. Uh, it's an international crisis. Um, and uh, it's something that all of us, whether we be um, scientists or engineers or clinicians or business people or 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 what we are, we're all in this together. And so, okay, let's... Um, Let's integrate and let's let's collaborate. And um, I even have a, a very powerful slide at the end here. I need to show that. Um, uh, thank you and uh, stay safe, my friends. And uh, I'll answer any questions you may have at this point. I'm not quite sure how much time I have, but but um, I'm having too much fun. I, you know, I I uh, was worried about this a bit because of the technology, but uh, then I got these. Um, headsets from from uh, uh, from my son and I, I think that if a, if a if person involved in gaming can keep these things on for you know hours and uh, you know your your other players don't complain about the quality of the quality must be pretty good I think maybe the um, the uh, the echo is missing I hope but anyway that's my take today thank you very much John John thank you very much you're absolutely right the quality is perfect uh, okay thank you used to be quite a gamer myself so yeah i'm used to the quality uh being being great in these these cases so thank you so much for that and adapting to this virtual setting uh despite that you were supposed to be at our conference uh, last april but hopefully we'll see you uh, in october do you have any final remarks we're just about to end up the session and roy stern and will be will be joining us in a second um yeah i think um uh you know we we're talking about personalized medicine we're talking about the genomics. Uh, we're talking about a lot of really big things. Uh, we're talking about sensors, internet of everything. Now, what we need for that, and I think I showed it in passing when I showed the slide about COVID, we need a platform. Where on earth do we put that information uh, for each patient uh, if at the moment already with just EHR and PACS, we have challenges. Where do we put all the information that sensors are giving us? Let's say an EEG or an EKG or, 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 or a blood sugar or whatever. Where do we put that in such a way that it's part of the hospital information or the medical center uh, information system? And that's what we have been working on. And, and 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 in that sense, I see this as a, okay. It's a it's a uh, dashboard. I think it's more, and we're working with our clinic on it to uh, promote it as a, as a new platform for all of this information and all of the companies that are that are involved, companies and public players that are involved in giving us more and more information. So. I guess that's pretty much a summary. Um, I'll look on my paper to see if I have anything else. But um, okay, the vision, Kathy, I think said, okay, you have to have the vision, and then you have to then then only then are you able to plan, you know, a road to it. And the key thing there that everything is incremental. If it's really new, if it's inventive, you start with something. You make it make sure it works. Then you advance to the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing. 
because at the end of the line, it's a patient, it's a human being that you are working, whose health you were uh, affecting, or even even livelihood and 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 um, life you are uh, affecting with what you're doing. That's what makes this unique and makes it very enthusiastic for a lot of scientists and engineers to be involved in what's going on. Um, look at the American Moon Project. I mean. There were there was another moon project too, but that was not so public. Look at the American Moon Project and why things were done in the way they were doing. They they were done because uh, there's a particular individual in the world who wants to go to Mars, and he's going to be doing exactly the same way to uh, that. And this idea of a vision of a goal and incremental steps to achieve it. That's what med medical technology. When we're talking about inventions is really all about. So. John, John, thank you very much. I absolutely agree with you. There's a Japanese philosophy, uh, Kaizen, which uh, especially talks about these incremental steps and, and yes. that's often, often thought of uh, when talking about this. So thank you once again for joining me here today. It was a great honor and pleasure to have you on. And uh, I wish you a wonderful day. Thank you very much. It's a midsummer, uh, and Finns especially appreciate midsummer. Happy midsummer. Great. Happy midsummer. Thank you, John. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>